How are you doing guys? This is Chronic Rush and welcome to episode 4 of my brand new series, Road to France. Welcome back guys. And um, what this series is all about is a traditional road to gold with my own slight twist. I'll start off with a silver non-rare French squad. Go and check out episode 1 for that. And then depending on the results of the games I play in this episode will depend on whether I upgrade or downgrade the player. Um, welcome back guys. And I'd just like to say a massive thank you to all the supportive comments and the likes um, from the previous episodes. I really, really appreciate all of that. And um, it seems to be going pretty well so far. And um, I'm having a lot of fun with this series. Um, it's it's always nice to start with some players that you wouldn't normally use, but as you can see there, we have three silver non-red cards still left before we can move on to the gold non-reds. And um, as you can see, we're going to go for this player here, Willy Bolly, a centre-back who plays in the Liga Portuguesa or the Premier League, um, Premier League, sorry, the Portuguese League, basically. And um, he's got a decent amount of pace and hopefully he can swap him out for probably um, Lino Zuma. Um, and that could be a good swap for swap. But we'll go into this game. The latency wasn't the best, um, but I was having some trouble finding a game. So I thought I'd just go straight into this one and uh, see what the final out was hopefully we can keep on our win streak. I believe we only got one loss so far in this whole series. But come against this um oddly put together squad. You've got some gold players, some silver players. That striker up front, the Argentinian, is rapid as fuck. Um, but um, and he's tiny, so that may come in our advantage. But um, we eventually get into this game, and um, we're going to start off here in the eighth minute here, passing around. There was a bit of lag ago, but we find a nice ball in to Elzerik, our striker, and a fantastic finish there from the Frenchman uh, to go and make that one nil there. Um, he's been a very, very good player in that centre attack in mid spot. This is the pacey motherfucker of a striker, the Argentinian. Um, just bobs and weaves throughout my whole defence and puts that into the back of it. Um, straight after we just scored to go and make that 1-1. One, one. Uh, then moving to the 36th minute here and he's got the ball. There's nothing really going on here um, until we pass it and um, I was just trying to close him down. He finds a lovely ball. I'm not sure what my defence was doing and same with my keeper. A keeper really should have got there first before him and just closed that down. Uh, but uh, that made it 2-1 in his advantage. This game wasn't going well. His strike was just annihilating me. Uh, but a nice header there onto the path of Dribble Cisse. Cuts inside. A lovely piece of skill there just to take his defender completely out of the game and then uh, cuts inside and finesses that around the keeper. A very, very nice well worked goal there from Dribble Cisse uh, to go and make that 2 2. Uh, we then move in to the second half, 83rd minute here. Elderick here, very, very nice touch. Get fortune to go past the player, but a fantastic right footed finish into the bottom corner to go and make that 3 2. Then we ended up winning that game 3 2. A very, very close game indeed. Um, but um, as you can see there, um, we had the same amount of shots. I had a bit more possession than him. I did feel I had a number of chances which I really, really should have put away. And his only threat was his. Motherfucker of a pacey strike of the Argentinian guys. Um, he's about five foot two, but he's got like 90 acceleration, 90 agility, 90 balance. He's absolutely ridiculous. But um, Lino Zuma is going to be the player we're going to swap out, and he's been a fantastic player for us in this team. Um, a very, very good player, and for 350 coins, it did the job. Obviously, Kurt Zuma um, is his brother, and probably is a probably a better choice. But he does go for quite a bit. Um, but so we're going to swap out Zuma, being a fantastic player, and put in Bolly, um, another pacey centre back there. Hopefully, he'll do the job. As you can see there, 82 paces, six foot five player as well, um, 77 physical so hopefully you should do the job for about 2.8k, um, should be a fairly solid choice, but we're going to go into the next game and go for another centre back, it's going to be this player here, Carlo Borle, uh, to swap out for Ismat and the other centre back we have from PSV and um, this guy's got 93 strength or something, ridiculous um, he's an absolute tank and hopefully he should just help bolster that midfield, uh, defence sorry I think our defence is going to be extremely strong if we do go and pick up this upgrade uh, but we go into the game here and they come against Liam FC. And uh, he's going to have this um, basically starter squad with a couple of um, links there. He's slowly getting into it in terms of um, he's slowly buying some players. You can see there is an okay amount of chemistry for a fairly new squad. Uh, but um, we've still got the chemistry in our advantage. But it is a snowy pitch. So I just thought I'm going to go full-blown attack. And um, I never normally do this. But I, I just wanted to get that ball in the back of the net because... I just, snowy pitches just don't work for me at all. And um, this guy was not going well. I'm not too sure if he disconnected or he just pit, went for the full-blown rage quit. But um, it took some time. But um, he actually did, well... The game finished. I had the 1 0 lead, so I ended up getting the points. So I decided just to take that. Yes, we only played about 26 minutes, um, but um, I think you'll find from these shots, he had zero shots. He wasn't really proving um, too much of a threat, and the snowy pitch was pissed probably both of us off in the sense that snow is just stupidly annoying in this game, as you can see there. Dominated in possession and uh, that he had zero shots, and nothing was going for him really. I was all on the attack, and. Um, and there we go. We're going to go swap out the player. That means we've only got one more player to swap out. This player here, um, Mirren. 
Been a fantastic centre back as well. 69 pace there. Very, very good player. Um, six foot two. But we're going to swap him out for Carlo Borley, the Napoli centre back. 72 rated. At first, I wasn't going to pick him um, due to the fact he has a high attacking work rate. Uh, but um, I've seen a number of views saying he's a fantastic player. 86 physical on him. Six foot five as well with 60, 75 pace. Looks like an absolute tank. All my centre backs have 70 plus pace. I believe two of them are at least six foot five. I'm not too sure of the height of Dear Kitty, but they're all very, very strong. Strong, all very, very tall and all very, very good players. So hopefully they're going to help us when we go into some of the gold teams and come up against some stronger teams later on in the further episodes to come. But we're going to go into the final game of this episode here. And um, as you can see, we're going to pick up the final player. And it's going to be that player up front, Bifoma, uh, to swap out from Bybeck. Bybeck's been a fantastic player up front. We come against this Set It Ass squad, uh, full chemistry. And this is probably one of the hardest teams I've come up against recently. Um, and uh, it shows because we are slowly getting into a higher rated team. And we are slowly progressing up in the divisions, um, so we're going to find more sweaty, more powerful teams, but in the 37 minute is a bit of a standstill until then, Di Natale here gets fairly fortunate for that ball to stay at his feet, and he's just going to keep on driving, um, and uh, this was laggy as hell, as you can see there, I should have not really conceded there at all, my centre back should have got in front of Honda, Honda is not the strongest player compared to my 93 strength of Colabole, and he really should have scored that, but fair play, he took that finish fantastically well, and that made it 1-0, um, just before half time though, dribble Cissé, he's just going to go running on through, this guy should have defended that a lot, lot better, uh, but we're going to Thump that into the back and let's go and make that 1-1 one, one there. Then moving to the 72nd minute, we find a ball into Bayerbeck here. Bayerbeck is just going to steam in. Um, gets fairly lucky to get past two players there, just uh, getting shrugged off the ball. And um, I just absolutely smack that the keeper. Comes off one of his body parts and goes into the back of there. And that goes and makes it 2-1. And this guy must have had enough because... Um, he was he was actually speaking. You may have heard him speaking on the game. Absolute raging throughout the whole game, to be fair. And he had enough and must have just turned off his Xbox or something like that. And we pick up the win there. That is a bit later on in the game, obviously, 73rd minute. So it wasn't too bad. We did play most of the game. Uh, but Bayerbeck scored the winning goal there. Um, a very, very powerful shot indeed. Well run as well. And uh, he's actually going to work himself out of the team. He's been a fantastic striker. I would definitely, definitely recommend him. He doesn't look like the best, but um, he was surprisingly good. Um, and um, that's hence the reason I took him, the last player, to be out of the team. Just because he was a very, very powerful player. Um, as you can see there, 14 games, 15 goals, 8 assists. Fantastic performance indeed. And there's a lot more goals I could have scored with him. Um, just the chances I had. His work rates weren't the best, but still, he was a fantastic striker. But we're going to swap him out for this. This player here, Bafoma, I believe he plays in the um, Liga um, BVA. It used to be called uh, Thialvi, I think he used to have a spell at West Brom. Uh, but he's got a lot of pace and uh, hopefully he should do a fantastic job up top. A bit more expensive, but hopefully he should be banging goals in left, right and centre. But guys, let's come towards the end of this episode, guys. If you'd like to remember, click that like button. Also remember to subscribe. Stay tuned to this series if you're new here as well. And any comments in the, any feedback in the comments would be much appreciated. Guys, this has been Crush. Till next time, adios.